Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Uh, we're in my office because I'm planning on doing something quite significant, but before I do any changes in here, I'm gonna change this. And this is my NZXT H1, this is my daily driver. This is the PC that I use for all the music production on the channel and basically anything that's not video editing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch this black H1 to a white H1 because as you can see here in my office, all of the tabletops are like a dark and a black color. I'm changing my entire office to be white because I want to film more in here and white is better for diffusing light. So that's what we're going to do. But first, we've got to rebuild this. All of the desks and everything are coming later in the week and we'll probably cover this in a full, like it's not a studio, it's my office rebuild video. We're going to do that probably next week or the week after, depending on all this CES stuff that we've got coming up. But first, we're going to transplant this. So let's uh, go to the studio and actually transplant this little thing. Now I've got a white one that I, I showed a little bit of a while ago on the channel. Uh, you can see it there. And we did a video where we fit all the GPUs into that, well, all the big ones at least. But yeah, there's actually a couple other things I'm gonna do here as well. So if we just go back and uh, talk about the motherboard, because the motherboard that I have in here is the ASRock ITX TB3, it's X570 board, it's got the Intel cooler mounting, but I wanna use that board for some review stuff coming on a little bit later. So I updated the BIOS, it did all that, and I'm gonna switch it to this board because I haven't really been using this board and I figured if I'm not really using it, I should pull one of the nice boards out of a production system and put this in to make this a production board instead. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna rebuild that. I mean, it's like the easiest system ever to rebuild, but yeah, I, I thought that because I'm doing all of these changes and I'm changing my office and doing all this stuff, I'm just gonna share the whole process with you guys because every time we do content with like us, like building studio stuff or like changing desks and all that kind of stuff, you guys really like it because you like to see this like behind the scenes glimpse of how we do things. So that's what we're gonna do. So let's get stuck into it. Okay, first things first, I'm gonna address the thing that people are probably gonna comment about the most right at the start of the video, and that's about the riser cable and these NZXT H1 cases. With the both of the H1 cases that we've had, we haven't had any issues. I've been daily driving this since before it was even like announced or released or whatever, and I've had zero problems with it. So yeah, that's my all I've got to say about it. I haven't encountered any issues that anyone else was having, and from speaking to NZXT, it was a very very isolated issue with a certain batch, it wasn't all of them, but they have since rectified the issue and done like a re-release of the case now. So any new cases that you get from here on out that weren't from uh, a certain batch that was released between the release and like, I'm gonna say October last year, you should be good now. Anyways, let's pull this apart and I'll, I'll talk to you guys about the parts while I'm doing this. So this one, I, I don't think I actually, made a video on what I did with this initial, like what ended up happening with this, but I swapped out the CPU and the motherboard. I don't even think I did a video about it at all. And I, it's got an X570 board. I think last time uh, it had a, an Intel system in it. From memory, I think it was a 8700K and a 5700XT from memory, but now it's an X570 board. It's got a 3600, which is, this board's completely overkill for that CPU. And it's also got an RTX 2060, as 2066 gig. So it's quite conservative with its specifications, although it does have 32 gigs of RAM because music production and plugins and that kind of stuff. And that actually leads me into the next thing. We get a lot of questions from people uh, asking about music production PCs and that kind of stuff, and what specs you need and whatnot. Uh, the thing is, it, it basically depends on the type of music you're producing. I found that most of the time with the stuff that we do, uh, I just, I need more RAM than CPU horsepower just for all of the effects and EQs and plugins and stuff that we use. But other, I would say go for more RAM and a 64-bit version of the audio software and plugins that you're using because even though 64-bit uh, software has been around for a long time, 
music production's taken a little while to catch up to the rest of the industry when, in terms of 64-bit applications. So if you're using a program like Pro Tools or whatnot, make sure you're using the 64-bit version. But yes, okay. This is looking a bit dusty, not gonna lie. But these cases are quite easy to build in. It's kind of hard to do a build video with these, which is why I'm talking to you guys because it's a good way of catching up and seeing how you guys are. But basically, uh, it's so easy. Four screws to hold the motherboard in essentially, and that's really it, and the cooler, and that's it, so yeah. Did I hook up RGB in here for some reason? I don't know what I was thinking, but I'm actually gonna go a little bit of RGB in this PC because you can see it on my desktop, so it makes a bit of sense. But yeah, the H1 is an interesting case. It's got an in integrated cooler and power supply, which is actually a reason why I like it because from, a maintenance and building standpoint, I don't have to do much at all, so yeah. Something quite interesting with this motherboard as well, if you don't know, this is an ASRock X570 board, the ITX TB3, and it is one of the only, if not the only motherboards that doesn't use AM4 cooler mounting and socket mounting for your coolers. So this actually uses the same as uh, LGA 115X and 1200 mounting, so you don't need to use uh, those brackets. And that's basically because the keep out zones on the motherboard are, are, are less on an Intel board. So you can actually get more creative with what you put on a small board like this little ITX board. I think it's quite cool. When I saw this at Computex in 2019, this was my f one of my favorite things that I saw at the whole show because it was just so ASRock. <laughs> they always, well, they used to at least do really odd stuff like this and I dig it. I like it a lot. Another question we get with the H1 is, can you install an air cooler with it? You can, you can remove the AIO if you like, but it just makes it easier to keep the AIO and you're kind of wasting money to be honest because this stuff is included and the case is not cheap. Like this case, I don't, I can't remember what it is, but I, it's like over 600 Australian dollars. But again, it does include like the power supply and stuff like that. So I can see why it costs so much money. It's only four screws, like most ITX cases holding in the motherboard. I'm just gonna pull those out. People often comment at me building computers standing up. The reason why I do it, uh, it's from a lot of practice and also so you guys can see what I'm doing and I don't have to get funky with camera angles. I can just, I just learned to build PCs with them standing up. I think it's, I think it's kind of easier to, for me at least anyway. Okay, board should just come out now. We should be good to go. I like making these videos because sometimes I get to share some tips of things that I do. And I've showed this one a long time ago, probably over a year ago, of how I clean CPU IHSs and, uh, and, and coolers and all that stuff. I use these little round makeup pads. They're very, very cheap. And I just spray some IPA into it. This is like a spray bottle of IPA. Very, very handy, kind of expensive, but this is how much I've used in a year, so. It's, it's gone quite a long way with all the builds that we've done in the past year. And I just put it on these makeup pads and it just makes it really, really easy to clean. I usually use two or three when I'm doing it. So the IPA actually leaks through to the other side of the pad. So on the second go, you've got another whole moist side to clean it with. And then I just use a fresh one, one that doesn't have anything on it to then clean the rest of it up and then you can, there you go. It does seem a little bit wasteful, but these are very, very cheap. Okay, almost done. We're, we can almost get to the fun part of building. GPU. Just gotta plug, unplug the power, we're good. And that's it, that's the uh, 2060, I think it's the gaming OC. I've had this one for a while. I wasn't using it and it's, it's a two slot card, so it's nice and thin. And I don't need a lot of GPU horsepower for this computer. Although it is probably overkill for a music production PC, but if I could go for a GPU that didn't have any power requirements with a PCIe power connector, then I would, but this one's just gonna do for now. 
As mentioned, we use this ITX TB3 X570 board from ASRock with this Intel cooler mounting. It's a pretty great board in terms of feature set, except it's only got one M.2 slot, which is another reason why I'm, I'm going to be changing it out. Uh, it does have Thunderbolt, which is really good for music production, but uh, since I'm not using any Thunderbolt stuff at the moment, it just doesn't make sense for me to keep this in rotation. And if I really need to swap it out, then I will, and I probably won't film it. But again, like I said, it's got Intel cooler mounting, so it actually does have the same back plate that you'll find on an Intel socket, and it's got the same mounting holes. Now the black H1's pulled apart and everything's been pulled off this board. It's time to do a build thing. So let's get stuck right into it. gents it's been a very very long time since we've done this but it's time to visit our friends over at peel corp all right so let's uh do a little bit of a peel and see how this one goes Ooh. Ooh. that was pretty excellent claire but do you know what time it is it's time to engage cinematic mode. Ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the build again for like the 10th time in the NZXT H1, although this is the first time we've built with one in white. And if you missed the intro, or you skipped that part. The reason why I switched this to white is because all of the tabletops in my office, I'm changing from black to white so we can diffuse a bit more light because I want to feel more B-roll in there 
and I want to do like some teardown videos in there as well. And I just want to change it up a bit because I feel like you guys get bored of just me sitting at this table all the time. And also, I walk into my office some mornings and even though the sun's out and the window's open and I turn the lights on, it just feels so dark because the tabletops absorb all the light and I'm, it just makes me feel, I don't know, not motivated and sad. I don't know, just, I don't know, I'm human. I just feel weird about it. So it's 2021, so it's time for a refresh of my office. And that's what I'm gonna be doing. And I'm gonna be making a full video about doing all of that. It might turn into like a mini series or something, but I'm super keen. I ordered everything on the Ikea website so they can deliver it because one of the tabletops is way too big to fit in our car. It's just not possible. I've gotta to go to Ikea and get like a chest of drawers and some other stuff. I don't really want to leave the house at all. Uh, but I didn't think of ordering it uh, when I ordered the other stuff, but it's okay. Ikea is pretty close to us, so I might just mask up and go down there and grab some extra little bitties. I went on Amazon and I, I ordered a bunch of cable management stuff, which I actually want to talk about in the video because I found some really cool things you guys might be interested in on Amazon as well, like little cable routing sleeve things with zippers on them and you can unzip them and all kinds of stuff. Anyway. Uh, I'll talk about that in that video, but if you like this video, hit the like button. If you hated it, hit the dislike button twice. If you like the music, I made some new beats. I've been making some new music lately as well for 2021. Yeah, it's available on our Patreon if you want to get your hands on that. And if you want to get early access to videos like this one, float plane. All right, Claire, are we done? I hope so. Okay, we are done. And I'll put a PC part picker list for this build on the description area thing that the people tell you to do when they watch the videos on the YouTubes, although... The PC part picker list for this is probably going to be really boring. It's going to be like four things because this is basically nothing because this case includes basically everything. Anyway, I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peek. We seek. And for the office rebuild thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to show you guys some cool little things that I've built and I'm going to build to, that you can probably like use for your own setups if you have like an office setup or if you want to make things a little bit more efficient, because that's kind of one of the things I'm really big on, it's efficiency with workspaces. But yeah, I'm out. Oh, I just got a notification on my phone saying all of the stuff that I ordered for the cable management stuff from Amazon is on the way. That's exciting. Thanks for watching.